Hello everybody, welcome to Level Pixel Level. Today I just want to show you how to spot and where to find dependencies on a rig. So what is a dependency? A dependency in Blender is a cyclical relationship in a rig that causes calculation issues when they're changed. Let me show you what I mean with a very simple example. So I'm going to create an armature, a single bone, and I'm just going to duplicate this over. I'm going to take this bone here and I'm just going to rename it to parent. And this joint I'll just rename to child. With the child selected, I shift click on parent. I do control P to make a parent and I'll do keep offset. So now in pose mode, this bone moves the child. Parent moves the child. So this bone is pushing this bone here through a parent child relationship. Let's add one more thing. I'm going to click on the parent and I'm going to go to the constraint tab and I'm going to add a copy rotation. I'm going to make the target the armature and the sub bone is going to be the child. Now watch what happens when I rotate the child. Something very interesting happens and this is a dependency. So I'm just going to turn it off and turn it back on again just to get it back to its neutral state. So now the rotation of the child is controlling the parent. And you can see here how I have a cyclical calculation and Blender does not do well with these. You might be finding that your rig is breaking and it might be caused by something like this. So you might have hundreds of bones on a rig and not really know where to find this, but I'll show you one thing here. If you come to window and you go to toggle system console, It'll bring up this console window, and right there, I've got a printout that a dependency cycle has been detected. So Blender will actually tell you if this is happening. If you're on a Mac, I've left instructions for how to access this console window. Uh, it's a little bit different. You have to go through your applications, but you can find a link in the description. And every time I switch from edit to pose mode, this will actually show up. Let me show you what I mean. So every time I flip from edit to pose mode, this dependency cycle is printing. So every time there's a calculation update, this is printing for me. And if we actually look at what this is, it's saying, hey, there's a parent bone, and it's the parent bone of the child. Finish this calculation. And then after that, you have a constraint, a copy rotation, finish this calculation, and it's in pose mode. And then it's going back to the parent. So it's kind of just telling you where you could find that information. Unfortunately, it doesn't display any bone names or any other information about the constraint name, so sometimes you have to go digging to find these things. Let's talk about a simple example and how to fix it. Uh, one way to fix these is with hierarchy. It's usually how I end up fixing dependencies, actually. So I'm just going to add a monkey and a donut. So I'm going to take uh, Suzanne here and I'm just going to parent it to the torus with a simple object parent. Now what you might want is the rotation of the monkey to move the location of the torus. Um, you can get this a lot of times with a driver. So if I right click on the X rotation and do copy as new driver, click on the torus, I'll just right click on the Y and do paste driver. And right away, over here, you'll see that I have a dependency cycle detected and it outlines the entire dependency for me. Now, if I rotate this, it's going to start kind of messing up and trying to activate that cyclical nature there. I'm going to zero this out. So I usually fix this with another object by creating a hierarchy and making these two objects, which are an apparent child relationship into a sibling relationship. So I'm going to add a plane axis. I'm going to select both of these, click on the plane axis and do control P object. Now this object I would use to move them around and this object when I rotate it will still move the torus. So I tend to do this with another object to eliminate these two objects depending on each other so I can do the cool stuff with drivers, constraints, any bone modifiers at this level so they're not actually interacting with each other. And then this one is my main movement controller. Okay, let's talk about one more example that's a bit more complicated with a rig. So I'm going to add a single bone um, and I'm just going to make a really quick IK setup here. So I'm just going to add an upper leg, a lower leg, and a foot. And I'll just rename these quickly with this one being the hip control up here. And I'll just do a couple things. This bone here, I just want to disconnect it. So right now it's a connected bone, so I'll just disconnect it here. And I'm just going to take the upper leg, shift click on the hip, and do control P, 
and keep offset to make that a child of the hip. If I expand the outliner here, you can see my hierarchy, the hip, upper leg, lower leg, and foot. So it's just a four chain hierarchy here. And I'll flip back to pose mode. So this is usually the joint where you'd add your inverse kinematics constraint. So I'm gonna add it here. And I'm gonna target the armature itself and the pole is usually the foot. When the foot moves, you want it to actually drag the IK around. I'm gonna set my chain length to two. And I wanna have the chain length at two because I want this to only calculate up two joints in my IK, this being one and this being two. If I did three, it would calculate all the way to the hip. Now, when I move the foot though, I start to get that very odd dependency loop issue again. So zero this out, I'll just flip to edit mode. Um, actually, one way to get this to turn off is to just turn the IK on and off again. So this foot here, if I just expand my hierarchy, is a child of the lower leg here. But then it is feeding back into the upper leg as a calculation. And this is causing a, a dependency in Blender and it can't calculate the final outcome. So usually though, you do want a foot control to actually move the foot. So to fix this, I'm actually gonna add another joint. I'm gonna duplicate the foot joint and I'm just gonna scale it. Now this foot here is still uh, looking at the lower leg. I'm just gonna rename this IK target. And I'm gonna take this and I'm actually gonna parent it to the hip. Now my hierarchy, the upper leg and the IK target are siblings of each other. Meaning the IK target does not depend on the upper leg for anything and the upper leg does not depend on the IK target. I'm gonna flip back to pose mode and in my inverse kinematics, I'm gonna flip the bone target to IK target. Now when I move this, I get this really nice IK leg that does not have any dependencies in it. Now there is one other thing though, and that's that the foot bone isn't gonna rotate now with this IK target control. To fix that, I can click on the foot bone here. I can add another constraint called a copy transforms. I can make the armature the target and make it the IK target. So now when I rotate that, I can rotate my foot and move my foot. And I can always just move my hip whenever I want as well too. And this becomes my new foot control. So I hope that kind of clears up for you what dependencies are and just some ways to fix them just by adding extra joints and fixing them in your hierarchy. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. Big thank you to my patrons for supporting this video. It's because of you that I can continue to make these videos. Head over there if you want to see some behind the scenes, uh, some extra videos and some exclusive content. I also post videos about a week or two early up there too, so you get early access to everything. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.